Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie and today I'm going to talk about some new makeup releases and whether they're going to go to my wish list or whether I'm going to pass over them entirely. This video series was inspired by Samantha March's Will I Buy It series. So I'll have her channel linked down below as well as her Will I Buy It playlist. I know she's also started a community playlist where different influencers can talk about makeup releases. So you, if you like the style of video, you can watch a whole bunch of us talk about new makeup releases. So I'll also have her community playlist linked down below. The first product that I want to talk about is from the crayon case and they've released this matte eyeshadow palette which this immediately gave me take me back to Brazil vibes from BH Cosmetics and James Charles vibe. I've never tried anything from the crayon case but I know a lot of makeup artists that I follow on Instagram reuse their products and their looks talent aren't great. I'd be interested in trying this but to be honest a matte rainbow palette really doesn't appeal to me. I feel like I have enough matte colorful colors in my collection that a rainbow palette is nice but I'd rather have a cohesive color story than just every color in the rainbow slapped together. So although this is nice, I can definitely see this being useful for working makeup artists who want to do colorful looks in their clients. For my collection and my personal needs, I'd rather see a more tailored color story than just every color of the rainbow smashed together in one. I find all the new makeup releases from either Indie Mood, Hot Fire Makeup, or Trend Mood One, so all of those Instagram accounts will also be linked down below if you want to know where all these photos are from. The next release that I want to talk about is from Blush Tribe and they're releasing this neon palette. That missing shade in the corner is supposed to be a purple, but purple shadows are notoriously hard to formulate, so they haven't 100% put that shadow in the palette, but they have all other eight shades. I like this, but I really don't think that neon shadows fit with my makeup preferences. I like colorful looks. I'm wearing an all purple look today, but it's a little bit more toned down and not as bright and vibrant. I could definitely find, see this palette having a great place in the market because I know colorful shadows are so in and there are people that totally want to wear bright colorful looks and this would be the perfect matte palette to pair with some of their shimmers. But for me, I'm not really checking for this, but I think it's creative and I think it would be in addition to Blush Tribe's already existing eyeshadow palette collection. A Blush Tribe palette that I am interested in trying is their pastel palette. First of all, the outside packaging of this is absolutely stunning, but more importantly, I love the colors inside. As opposed to the neon palette, I could really see myself getting used out of some pastels because I like colorful looks that are a little bit more toned down. And I feel like pastels could definitely be used on an everyday basis. Those pinks, oranges, and yellows are something I could totally use and pair with like neutral eye looks just to give them a little bit more color. I would want to see reviews on this first because I know pastel shadows can be kind of hard to formulate. They can be either too chalky and they have to have a white base to give them that nice like light airy color. So I think if other influencers reviewed this palette positively, I would definitely add it to my wish list. Blush Tribe is on my list of nine brands that I want to try in 2019, so I could definitely see this pastel palette being one of the first releases that I try from them. Another brand that's on my nine brands to try in 2019 is Menagerie Cosmetics. Makeup Monsters were branded and is now known as Menagerie Cosmetics, and they have decided to release liquid lipsticks. Makeup Monsters had liquid lipsticks, but it looks like they're completely rebranding and redoing their collection under the Menagerie label. So this is the color story that they're releasing for their liquid lipsticks, and I love them. The news of the purples are really calling me in, and love to be able to try their formulas because I love liquid lipsticks. I feel like I'm one of the last people in 2019 that has really loved liquid lipsticks, so I'd be checking to see how this formula is. If I purchase a palette from Menagerie Cosmetics, which I mentioned that I'm eyeing their Whale Song palette, I think I would 100% throw a liquid lipstick or two in my cart. So this release hasn't really been fully announced yet, but Kylie Cosmetics is coming out with more bronzers, highlighters, and blushes. I have to say, I, I like Kylie. I have some of her lip kits and I enjoy them. I think they're good quality. They're not my favorite, but I don't think they're the worst by any means. But now that Kylie's an Ulta, I feel like her stuff is more accessible because if it ends up that you hate her formula, you can return it. If you love her formula, you can just drive to the store and buy it instead of paying for that shipping and waiting for all of that hassle. I think if these products come into Ulta, I would swatch them and see if I wanted them because I don't think Kylie Cosmetics Online allows for returns. So if I bought like a color that didn't match me or if I decided the formula didn't really work with me, I'd kind of be stuck with this product. So having the luxury of having Kylie in stores would definitely make me more inclined to try these because I know I'd be able to return them if they didn't work out for me. I'd be interested in seeing what the price point is for this. I forget how much our highlighters were, but I feel like they were kind of reasonable, especially considering Kylie is a more high-end brand. So if I think these were in a reasonable price range, I would definitely try one of the bronzers and the blushes because I don't need any more highlighters, but I've been really checking for blushes lately. So speaking of blushes, Jouer is releasing this blush palette, which I know they have those blush bouquets, which are like the two pan blushes, and I've heard really positive reviews on them. 
I haven't tried anything from Jouer because a lot of their stuff is just not really appealing towards me. But I've heard great things about their blush and bronzer bouquets, so there's something that I would maybe consider eyeing in Sephora sale. But this blush book really calls to me because it has so many shades. I feel like I don't need to buy any more blushes after I bought this. It has six pans. From what I've heard, their face formula is great. And I know a lot of influencers have codes with Jouer, so I could even get a discount. But now there's Sephora, I could wait for a VIB sale. The price for this palette has not been released yet. So I am hesitant to see how much it is because I think the blush bouquets are like 18 to 20 something dollars. So I can only imagine this be a $50 blush book, which is extremely pricey for blushes. So I'm gonna hold off for a little bit and keep it on my wish list. So I'd be interested in seeing more information on this, more swatches on different skin tones, and definitely interested in seeing how much it's gonna cost me. So Melt Cosmetics is releasing a new eyeshadow stack and it's like this blue copper one. I don't think they've named it given a release date or a price yet, but they did release all the shadows. So the thing that's different about this compared to most Melt eyeshadow stacks is that they're split pans, which I think is a genius idea because the Melt pans are huge, which it's great, you get a lot of product, but on the other hand, like, are you really gonna go through an eyeshadow palette that's supposed to be that pigmented and that big? So I think the split pan really allows them to pair more colors together and you really get more bang for your buck. The one issue that I have with this palette is the matte to shimmer ratio. They only have two blues and three out of four of them, they only have two blue pans and three out of four of them are shimmers, so you have one matte blue. I feel like this leads to like that summer look that was a warm crease with the blue on the lid, which yeah, that's pretty and I've definitely worn that before, but I want to be able to have variety within my look, especially if you're paying for the cost of Milt. Milt's an indie brand and their prices are definitely up there, but I've heard their prices reflect their quality. I haven't tried anything and though I want this palette, I wish it had a few more matte blues because I have so many shimmery blues in my collection that I'm just dying for more matte blues where I can pair them better. So speaking of matte blues, Certified tease this eyeshadow prototype. So what Certified does is that they'll show a prototype of an eyeshadow palette that's Photoshop and they'll post it on their page to get feedback from their audience. Do they like this shade? Do they wish there were substitutions? And then they'll take those suggestions and then finalize a product. So Trend Mood, I guess, caught wind of this Certified palette and posted it on her page. And I guess a lot of people didn't know that they Photoshopped their palettes because there was some harsh feedback. Like, this is totally Photoshopped. And it's like, yeah, it says in the caption it is. But if this is anything like their final product, I would 100% buy this. A matte blue and green palette would be such an asset to my collection because I have a lot of blues and greens, but most of them are shimmers or metallics. This palette would allow me to do complete blues and greens looks, plus I could pair it with like other colors and not just limited to a monochromatic look. I feel like a color palette like this is totally missing from the industry because I think that blues and greens are going to be totally on trend for 2019, like purples were on trend for 2018. So I really applaud Certify for jumping the gun with this. My only concern is that uh, people might see how great and how innovative and how great this idea is that bigger brands might decide to do an all blue and green palette. So I really hope that Certify's ideas don't get stolen. This also gives me a little bit of a flashback to Tarte's April Fool's Icy Betch palette because it's blues and greens, but at least they're executing it. And I really am surprised that Tarte hasn't come out with a blue and green palette because everybody was so disappointed that was an April Fool's joke that they haven't released it for summer, which I was surprised by because they could have been like, oh, people did want that palette. Let's release it and like make a joke on our own joke. So another trend that's surprising me by taking off in 2019 is the jelly products. I feel like the first jelly product was the Farsali Jelly Highlighter. And I kind of thought that was so gimmicky that the trend would die, but I am so wrong. So Wet n Wild is releasing these jelly eyeshadows that are gonna cost $4.99 a piece, and I'm definitely interested in trying them. I know ColourPop also has their Jelly Much eyeshadows, which I was had on my wish list, but the thing about Wet n Wild as opposed to ColourPop is that Wet n Wild is in stores, so I can just go to my local drugstore or to Ulta and pick up one of these shadows and try it instantaneously. Whereas ColourPop, I'd have to place an order online, and then that means I'd have to miss, meet the shipping minimum, and then that means I'd have to buy a bunch of stuff that I didn't need, so I would definitely check for Wet n Wild because I do want to try the jelly products and I love ColourPop because they release so much stuff. I'm so tempted to buy everything that there is no way I could go on their website and buy one jelly shadow. Like I have no willpower when it comes to that and I'm totally self-aware. So having the Wet n Wild ones in store made me try out like what is this jelly trend all about and at $4.99 that's a price point that I'm totally on board with. So a release from another drugstore brand is Milani. Milani had their Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 foundation, which I know a lot of people liked, but it was very full coverage, and I actually don't think the lightest shade would have worked for my skin tone. They have since released 2-in-1, or the Conceal and Perfect concealers, which 
that defeat the purpose of the foundation? But they release concealers and they've also released foundation sticks. The concealers I might pick up because I can always use a new concealer, especially one from the drugstore, but I'm really interested in the foundation sticks. I know foundation sticks are getting released a lot recently and I haven't tried one yet, so I feel like Milani would be the first brand to try one from. I really want to try the ColourPop ones, but like I mentioned, I can't just buy a foundation from ColourPop and not buy every single every single individual shadow and the glossy lip that they have. So having Milani available at Ulta, which means I can find my perfect shade match in stores, would give me a really great opportunity to try out stick foundations and see if there's something I could see myself getting more use out of. I'd love to see what the shade range looked like in store and see if they do have something light enough for me because their original foundation line just didn't go fair enough, which it is what it is. But if their stick foundation does go fair enough and I'm able to find a shade that matches me, I would definitely be interested in trying this. So a stick foundation that went liquid foundation is the Hourglass Vanish Foundation. So they had their Hourglass Vanish Foundation sticks, which I feel like everybody loved. And I liked them, but I never really tried a stick foundation before. So Hourglass was not going to be my first brand that I tried a foundation from. And I heard their sticks had so little product that that was a big complaint that they're really expensive, but you're not getting that much of your money's worth. But them coming out with a liquid foundation in the Vanish formula is something I could totally get on board with. The foundation claims to be full coverage, waterproof, sweatproof, crease proof, pr crease proof, transfer proof, and a natural finish. Full coverage foundation isn't really my sort of thing, but if I could cheer it out, I'd definitely be interested in trying this. Hourglass is available at my local Sephora, so I think if this foundation comes into stores, I'd get a sample and see if it's something I could work with. I really want to try Hourglass, and I have a bunch of their blushes on my Sephora loves list, so I think a foundation from them would be a great purchase because I can only imagine that the ingredients would be such high quality because it is a really high quality brand. So the last of the release that I want to talk about is from Tarte Cosmetics, and Tarte Cosmetics has released this eyeshadow palette in Ulta. It's their Remix eyeshadow palette, and it's $24, and this is pretty, but where are the mattes? Can Tarte do colorful mattes? Because their Tarte's Pro Remix was something I was lusting afterwards, but then I saw people mention, like, there are no mattes in this, and then I was like, oh wait, I'm just paying for a bunch of shimmery colors that I already have. And I feel like this is deja vu because it's a bunch of really shimmery, pretty colors, but I have shimmery colors in my collection and I definitely don't need to buy more. I wish this palette would have been half shimmer, half matte because at $28, that's not a bad price. And I do like Tarte's eyeshadow palette formula, but I don't need an all shimmer palette. So it's definitely not something I'm gonna be grabbing. So those are a few makeup releases that are coming out that I just want to talk about and give my feedback on. What new releases are you excited for and what new releases are you avoiding? I'd love if you let me know down below. If you like this video, I hope you consider subscribing for new videos weekly, and I hope to see you in my next one. Thanks for watching.